Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today I am here with Show Me How to Wins Jackie! And we are going to be showing you the game Pry! King of the Pry. It's by IDW Games. I think it plays two to six players, and it takes what, an hour and a half to three play? Three to six. Three to six players? You have to at least have three people. And we just got finished playing it, and we're going to go ahead and show you what it looks like right now. So here we have the game Roar, King of the Pride, and everything it comes with. We're basically giving you a sample of everything over here. The cards, the different lion and lioness meeples. <laughs> and we got the little die here, which you make babies with, and of course the human houses. All the rest of this extra stuff over here is for the different players, right? This is the best part of the game. The little lions? The meeples, yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, you also get this beautiful board here, and then of course uh, your little keywords or like little player reference cards here. Depending on the players, you're going to be using the player scoring cards here. Yep. And so for a three-player game for us, we simply put this just like that. You can put your lines there to indicate who scored. That's wow. right. At the end of the game, you're going to be scoring with That's this That's what thing. we did. And then over here is a deck of cards you can score points up. Like, kind of like Ticket to Ride at the end of the game, you can score points with this. This is basically an area control game in which you're going to be placing your lions, depending on the color, in the locations of your choice, in turn order. And then in turn order, you're going to take different actions. One of the actions is going to be to make babies. You need to have a lion and a lioness. In which case, yeah, you're going to take that, right? You get a random token, and uh, you don't know if it's going to be a boy or a girl until the next turn. And so then in the next turn, you flip it over and it'll tell you female. Hopefully you'll get a male. Yep. And yeah, the ratio is like two to two to one. So more females than males, yeah. of course, because you get more males than you get more females than males as well. Uh, so the males are actually going to be able to roar, which is going to allow the females uh, to, to be tra uh, transformed into your pride. The females will gather you food, which is all this stuff on the board here. And uh, you can also use them together to mate. Uh, you can also sneak through different encampments because you can never be on the same location as another uh, pride or a human settlement. And every round at the beginning, the one of the players in Torn Erdo is going to get to place one of these guys here, as well as placing one adjacent in, in, in their area as well. So like if there's one here, the next one can be placed anywhere. But you always have to place these to, to begin with on sixes, I believe, mm -hmm. right? Yep. And so you're going to have to go through the rounds here. As, after all nine of these have been placed, then you're going to start taking them off and placing them in this... Uh, other side over here on the far side of the board and in which case depending on the number of players the game is six four five and three depends on when the game is going to end once this one hits here there's, there'll be another one you put here and another one that hits here yeah. if you're playing a six player game that is the last turn of the game yeah. otherwise for a three player game we played all the way down here which ended up being like 15 turns and that's the basic idea of the game they come to the first player token here and ancestral strength which is about combat you want to talk about that mm -hmm. So, um, if you're playing red, you come with one extra. Everybody has their own special power. So, you know, uh, some are able to sneak past better, some have more strength. So, um, ancestral strength has to do when it comes to roaring uh, or when it comes to attack. So, when you're attacking, uh, then you will your male lions will, um, you know, be the same strength as your whatever it is here. So if this red lion here will have two strength, where this blue lion here will only have one. But so in which case, if they were if you were red and you were fighting this guy here, this has two ancestral strength yeah. and this is one, that means that this guy would lose in the fight and how would have to run away. Yeah, actually, if it, if they're fighting, then the, he's just defending. So I think defenders... Defender never gets ancestral just, strength. Yeah, they're just like one. Each figure is one each. All the females are always one too, right? Yes. Only when you're yes. attacking does the uh, ancestral strength come into play, and that will indicate the amount of, um, of power they have, and then you can move across yeah. the board based but on But when scaling. you're roaring, you count the ancestral strength all the time. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And so it also tells you on the here all the different keywords and what you need to do, uh, your pride size, how many you can have in different locations, how much food you have, and how much each of these guys cost. It's two and then one. At the end of the game, whoever has the most points via this deck of cards, which you can actually draw from as well. It'll tell you, like, be the weakest and whatnot. We'll talk about that above. Um, as well as, of course, having the most area, uh, having the most lions and lionesses, and food production as well. Score all that up. Whoever has the most wins the game. Roar, king of the pride. Come up. Let's tell you about it. So a couple caveats now before we get started. The first one is that all the different characters have different powers. Mm -hmm. So you're always gonna have a different power. Some of them are based on the ancestral strength, which is red. You've got ones that give you plus one to your cub rolls, which gives you more. And of course, when you roll the die to make cubs, it's one to three or a plus. And that plus is... Not a plus. <laughs> it's not a plus. It's gonna give you one of these plus tokens and it's going to allow you to get plus one on any of the things you'll be using, which would be roaring, attacking, yeah. or even baby making in a later turn. But it's gonna cost an action for a plus yeah, one. Yeah, but you so. basically make no babies that. 
Yeah, no baby. It's infertile, in, infertile you lion a, there. You get one of these instead. And also the last thing is these guys here are starvation markers. Everybody's gonna get a certain amount of them at the beginning of the game. And when you can't feed your lions, you can use these. But once you're out, you're out. You're gonna start losing lions instead. So you gotta be careful about that. But that's the basic idea of the game. It's an area control game. You're going to be placing on the board and moving around and just trying to control areas as best as you can and having the most of everything. And of course the ticket to ride concept, which is drawing these cards, getting to different locations and whatnot. Yeah. I mean, so what are most of these cards gonna be like? The only difference between uh, ticket to ride and this is that you can reveal them, score them right away for end game. Uh, as long as long as you did it that turn. Be weakest in the ancestral strength. Are you the weakest? You are. Bam! You gain three points. Yeah, right. I, but then you don't have to be the weakest at the end of the game. You hit Sedan two right points. There. Yeah. Yeah, so they're very, very simple. And you can draw two, choose one, two, or zero of them, and you can score points yeah, that Yeah, because way. if you don't do it, there are negative points at the end of the game. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So you have to be careful, because you don't want to have them at the end of your, end of your game, because you're going to lose a lot of points. And also, of course, scoring with this here as well. Yeah. So what did you think about the game in, in, in concept? Uh, theme, whatever? Yeah, to me, it really feels like Rick's with risk with q meeples you know it's risk with it's ticket lion. to risk or <laughs> risk it to ride yeah if you really if you like uh games like risk where it's very strategic when it where, where it comes to where you place your um troops then it's basically like that you really have to think about where you place your where you where you move to because if you if you don't have enough food then you won't feed your lion, right? So you gotta And move. it seems like the game doesn't have a lot of luck, but it does, okay? Oh. First of all, baby making is the biggest amount of luck in this game. When you roll yeah. this die, getting a plus or a one, it kills you after the third time you're trying to do it because you're not getting what you need. And then also, let's say you do get what you want, but you keep getting females. Yeah. Without males, you can't mate. Without males, you can't fight. Without males, you can't roar. So it's very, very, we can still fight, but it's, it's lackadaisical at best because you don't have the strength, the ancestral strength. So this die plays a huge role. And then of course, there's a little bit of luck in these cards here as to mm -hmm. whether or not they help you or not. That's not so bad though, these here. Uh, if you don't like luck driven games though, this is going to be uh, probably a killer for you, honestly. Like if you don't like the amount of luck, cause there is a bit of luck. Um, also the baby, like you don't know what you don't know what you're gonna get. Like, yeah, like and you might not get what you want. In our game, I think you got like four or five male babies. Whereas every time I and then you can produce one more baby each turn. Yeah, that so, was my character. Ability. So you're able to like have more of these tokens and more more uh, chances for you to get male babies. But I roll. I think I roll every time I roll. One. It's like a one. One. Yeah. And then I think I roll like the most I roll was a three. It was one time, and it was all three female babies. This is very much like Triassic Terror in a lot of ways, <laughs> with the added bonus of the die. It feels like risk as far as area control yes. goes, and you are fighting each other. But there is a little less risk in this game than risk. There's less die rolling, of course. In fact, you don't have to use the die that much, but making babies is very, very important. Moving around the board is yeah. going to gain you food, and these little these little guys here are going to be able to, the little fe females are going to give you the food that you need. The males don't do that for you. And there's certain areas in the board that are stronger than others. There's sixes, threes, fours, yeah. whatever have you. You want to be on the sixes because that's what's going to give you a lot of food. But then that's also where people are going to be putting down the human tokens. You know, these, the little village things. Yeah, then, there's little villages here, and these block the areas that yeah. you want to go to. And every every round, I would get to do it, and then he would get to do it, yeah. and then she would get to do it. Turn order is very important because the last player in a turn gets to decide where that goes. So if you can set up a turn where your first player and next round your last player, then you'll be good for those two rounds. But then afterwards, you have no control, basically, of anything for two rounds. And then you'll have control again. So, um... I like it. I personally like it. I like the meatballs. I like the lime meatballs. But uh, one of the players that we play with basically got stuck. Poor cameraman. <laughs> it, it got to the point where he wasn't able to mate. And if you can't mate, uh, it's no good. And also, if you can't, you can't kill yourself in the game. So you yeah. need to. If you die, you get to come back. So there's no player elimination. You get to start again as though you had two and two. But at halfway through the game, it's just. And nobody was killing him, so he does not get to respawn, and yep. he separated his male and female. He just becomes this irritating little tick that goes around and like does nasty things to people. He can change the game, but he can't win it necessarily. However, pulling from this deck of cards can still net you a bunch of points when you're losing, which is yeah. what he was doing, yeah. pulling, and you get a ton of points. Yeah, I know. He ended up getting out. So this is a good catch-up mechanism. Yes, definitely. Yes. If only the board would have given you that ability to. It sucks to have that happen in a game, but I think it happens to a lot of area control games. So. 
whether that would be a deterrent to you is going to be up to you, I suppose. The game is beautiful as far as the board is yes. concerned. I mean, the box is all right as well. I like the different artworks on here. It's, you know... I would rate this as like right there in the middle somewhere, <laughs> uh, but the board itself but inside, is beautiful. inside, everything's great. And all the all the pieces are very nice. Yeah. The components are very nice. Good quality. This is going to last a long time. And if you like area control, I strongly suggest you check out the game Roar King of the Pride by IDW Games. Yes. So. Yes. All right, guys. Thanks for watching another unfiltered gamer review. We look forward to seeing you guys next time.